Often dealing with fertility issues, I think a common sentiment that patients share is that they can often walk away from consultations um, with more questions than answers. And so we're trying to change that by empowering patients with knowledge-based, evidence-based research blog posts to help share very important topics that are often very rarely spoken about. And this week I want to share with you the idea um, and research behind a very important factor which new research suggests can impact upwards of 35% of patients dealing with infertility and it can significantly affect sperm factor health. So a new research paper recently published in April 2022 in the Frontiers of Medicine journal looked at the role of urogenital and reproductive tract infections and how these types of microbes infectious microbes can actually increase the risk of sperm factor infertility. Now, if we're looking at a range of how many patients they expect actually have this issue, they expect it somewhere from 8% to 35%. So the studies have varying um, results. On average, we're seeing that it's probably closer to around 12% of patients in the infertile uh, reproductive Uh, care population, so patients are actually seeking reproductive care and and seeking fertility help, up to 12% of those patients actually uh, may have urogenital or reproductive tract infections. And this is a very important um, topic to discuss um, for a variety of reasons. One, I feel like um, from all the consultations I'll do in a year, I see maybe two or three patients where they've actually already been spoken to about this issue. So what that tells me already is if we're seeing that potentially 12% of the population has this issue and very few patients, like less than 1%, are actually having this discussion with a healthcare provider. It tells me there's probably a gap um, where more patients have this issue, but they're not. They're, there's no discussion around it. So that's what we're trying to change here. And uh, secondly, because often uh, reproductive tract infections for sperm factor fertility are often asymptomatic. So patients may go for a very long period of time with zero symptoms, and they may not even know this is a contributing factor. Um, And three, because we see there's a significant correlation between different types of bacteria, different types of viruses, and they significantly are associated with an increased risk with uh, for sperm factor infertility. So what are these microbes that we're seeing? We're seeing a variety of different bacteria and we're seeing a variety of different viruses. Uh, particularly we see enterococci or E. Uh, e. coli, um, some of the main common bacterial agents found in these underlying bacterial infections. And how much exactly does that seem to impact the risk for infertility? So in this systematic review that was published, they looked at over 72 clinical trials And when they compiled the data from all these studies, they found that having an infectious bacterial agent present in the urogenital tract, the reproductive tract, so that could include the urethra, the epididymis, seminiferous uh, tubules, um, or the seminal vesicles, or the prostate, um, was associated with about a 3.15 times increased risk of sperm factor infertility. So having one of the infectious bacterial agents present in the reproductive microbiome almost tripled the chances of having poor sperm health and poor sperm integrity. Similar with the viruses, they saw almost a 2.2 times increased risk of sperm factor infertility if some of these viral agents were present in the um, reproductive microbiome. Again, and this included things like herpes simplex virus, um, HIV, um, HPV, and uh, cytomegalovirus, or CMV, for example. So presence of these viral agents was also associated with a significantly increased risk of sperm factor infertility. And it's quite uh, concerning when we see that up to 12% of patients may actually have this issue, and it's something that's very rarely um, spoken about. And on top of that, the symptoms, um, there may be none, so it may be totally asymptomatic for patients. So we really have to rely on a high... um, I would say informative and um, when you're taking time to discuss with a healthcare provider your reproductive history, health history, medical history, screening for certain risk factors that may increase the risk of pre- the presence of urogenital tract infections or reproductive microbiome dysbiosis, um, as we call it. Um, and then also looking at more specific testing that can actually help to rule out these issues, especially 
when we're dealing with the, the term unexplained infertility, infertility, um, the number of patients I see in a year is, is way too much. Um, where they have poor sperm counts, poor sperm motility, or very high DNA fragmentation, but they're told it's unexplained. And then none of this other testing is often um, done for some of these patients. So, you know, there's a, there's a gap in um, the information that's provided to patients. And what we need to start doing is actually asking the right questions of, is there anything else that can be causing this? Are there any additional tests that we can consider for this? And often there are, and I find that conversation sometimes if um, patients are being very polite can be postponed by a year or two. So if you're just starting out of the fertility process or you're a veteran in this fertility process, don't be afraid to ask questions, asking the right questions and pushing to get the answers that you, you uh, need, need to hear. Um, so looking at the, the role of potential infections and reproductive microbiome um, is potentially a game changer for a lot of patients, especially again when we're dealing with this unexplained um, cause for idiopathic or unexplained sperm factor uh, infertility. And we often do see in patients where they have um, some of these risk factors, and so we prophylactically, prophylactically will treat them with antimicrobials. And on follow-up tests, we'll see that some of these sperm parameters have significantly improved. So it's important to chat with a licensed healthcare provider on whether you're at risk for at higher risk for uh, urogenital tract infections, um, what are some of the testing options that can be done, and what are some good potential treatment options if this does come back as a concern or as a positive test. And while this isn't going to explain all infertility cases, we're trying to shed light on a lot of cases that probably haven't had this discussion or conversation before, um, and which is why I strongly believe it is worthwhile considering and speaking with a licensed healthcare provider about this specific topic so we can try and leave less in, in gray areas or, or dark areas where we're kind of blind to other um, you know, risk factors and contributing uh, factors that can affect your chances of conception and really start focusing and paying attention to all the things um, that may be contributing and ruling them out one by one and then actually treating the ones that come up. And with unexplained infertility, usually it's not you know, one big cause of, of uh, infertility. It's usually a combination of multiple factors. It might be the reproductive microbiome of both partners, uh, might be ovulatory defect. Might, so we have to look at all the potential risk factors um, and chances of conceiving per month if you have these smaller risk factors you know, may not pr pr prohibit you or prevent you from getting pregnant, but it may reduce that chance of success per month. So instead of taking six to 12 months, it might take a much longer time for patients to successfully conceive if these factors are left undiagnosed and unfortunately in that case, untreated.